Now, let's talk about acid base. Acid base. Very important. I'm sorry, I know this is dry, but you got to know this. What are the most common causes of acidosis? Two things. Lactic acidosis and diabetic ketoacidosis. So lactic acidosis and diabetic ketoacidosis. What's the most common cause of alkalosis? Vomiting. Vomiting. So guys, you, vomiting is really one of the worst things that a body can do. We said it's the most common cause of hypokalemia, and it's also the most common cause of alkalosis. So now I'm going to ask you a question. Listen carefully. Remember I told you when we talked about nutritional deficiency and immune compromise, that you got cell-mediated immunity and you got humoral immunity? They're both important, but if you had to choose, the cell-mediated immunity is probably more important. Okay, we got acidosis and we got alkalosis. They're both bad. But generally speaking, which do you think is worse? Acidosis. Yes, they're both bad, but acidosis is worse. Why? Why? Remember I told you that all general anesthetics do two things to the heart. Those two things are decrease inotropy and increase ectopy. Acidosis does the same thing. Acidosis decreases inotropy and increases ectopy. Now think about this. One of the causes of acidosis is lactic acidosis due to decreased blood flow. If you are acidotic and your inotropy, contraction of the heart, is decreasing, you will get more acidotic. And if you get more acidotic, your inotropy will go down and then you'll get more acidotic. Do you see it's a vicious cycle? That's in general why acidosis is generally worse than alkalosis. Just remember that. That's why people go nuts when someone is acidosis and they don't go as nuts as when someone's alkalotic. All right, what's the compensatory mechanism for acidosis and alkalosis? Well, the system that incompletely compensates are the lungs. Doesn't do a great job. If you are acidotic, what will you do? You will hyperventilate. If you are alkalotic, you will hypoventilate. Does this restore things to normal? No, they're incomplete. The respiratory compensation is incomplete. So what is the complete compensation? It is done by the kidneys. The kidneys do the complete restoration of acid-base balance. And I am gonna teach you something that if you remember, you will always get this right on the test and life. Follow me here. Urine follows serum. Listen. Urine follows serum. One more time. Urine follows serum. Meaning, if you're acidotic, you shoot out in your urine acid. If you're alkalotic, you shoot out in your urine alkaline. Memorize that. Urine follows serum. If your professor ever asks you, well, what is the complete compensation for acidosis? You say, you get rid of acid and hold on to bicarb. What about alkalosis? You shoot out alkali into the urine and hold on to acid. That is the complete compensation. Complete compensation. So acid-base balance, very, very important.
Remember, vomiting is not a good thing. So finally, one of the things that is asked all the time is what IV fluids do you give and when? Now, there is no blanket answer to this. There is no answer that is, covers everything. But I'm gonna give you some guidelines that will allow you to have some structure in your brain in choosing when you use what IV solutions. And let me just make a statement to you. Guys, when you give someone IV solutions, the nurses are always talking about rates. How fast is the IV going? But you gotta make sure that they're getting the right IV. When I do rounds with my residents and my medical students, and I always do rounds with the nurses, not only do I want to know the rate of the IV, but I want to know what the IV is. So first, let's get rate out of the way real quickly. This is what you need to know. If you're giving one liter a day, that's 40 cc's an hour. Gotta memorize this, gotta memorize this. One liter a day, 40 cc's an hour. Two liters a day, 80 cc's an hour. Three liters a day, which is usually the standard, 125 cc's an hour. And four liters a day, 150 cc's an hour. Gotta memorize this, let me repeat it. 40 cc's an hour is one liter a day. 80 cc's an hour is two liters a day. 125 cc's an hour is three liters a day. And 150 cc's an hour is four liters a day. So now let's talk about the solutions. In your brain, I want you to divide up intravenous solutions into resuscitative solutions and maintenance solutions. Resuscitative solutions and maintenance solutions. When a patient is coming in the emergency room, you're generally thinking of resuscitative solutions. When someone is on the floor and stable, you're talking about maintenance solutions. So let's first talk about resuscitative solutions. Patient comes into the emergency room. All right, patient comes in the emergency room, has got belly pain or any kind of problem, but they're stable. They're stable. The most common solution you will give them, either lactated ringers or D5 lactated ringers. In your brain, I want you to think of LR, lactated ringers, as an ultrafiltrate of blood. It's like blood without the cells. So you're just giving someone blood without the cells. So if you, the patient's not unstable and they come in either D5LR or LR. Now, you're gonna ask me, well, which one should I use? just to let you know that the amount of sugar in a D5LR is very small, but if the patient is possibly hypoglycemic, they're diabetic, you give them D5LR. And most of the time, if you get asked by the nurse, do you want D5LR or LR? It's, you say whichever, it really doesn't make a difference as long as it's within the lactated ringers category. That's simple. The other patient who comes in the emergency room who requires a resuscitative solution is a patient who is in shock or hypotensive from blood loss or septic. They're unstable. The solution you give them is normal saline, normal saline, listen very carefully. Normal saline 
is iso-oncotic, but is normal saline isotonic? Nope. Nope. It's hypertonic. What is the concentration of sodium in normal saline? 154. Is your sodium normally 154? No. No. So therefore, normal saline is a hypertonic, it's an iso-oncotic solution, but hypertonic solution. And what does it do? It draws fluid into the vascular system. So in your brain for the rest of your life now, I want you to think that normal saline equals a volume expander. That's so important, I'm gonna say it again. Normal saline equals a volume expander. You give it to people who need volume. So basically your two resuscitative solutions in the emergency room are either D5 lactate ringers or lactate ringers and normal saline, which is a volume expander. Now in the emergency room, the only reason you would give someone D5W water, D5W water, is if they're in kidney failure. Why? Because you don't give people electrolytes when they're in kidney failure because they can't handle the electrolytes. So what was that resuscitative solution? Okay, now the patient goes up to the floor and they're stable. This is where the problem is. You may change the rate when they go up to the floor and they're stable but a lot of times the IV solution itself doesn't get changed. Now you keep someone on normal saline when they're on the floor and stable and you'll put them in a heart failure. And this drives me crazy. Guys, when you're stable on the floor and you want a maintenance solution, the most common maintenance solution, generally speaking, is D5, half normal saline plus 20 mil equivalents of potassium per liter. I'm gonna repeat that. The most common maintenance solution is D5, half normal saline plus 20 mil equivalents of potassium per liter maintenance solution. I want you for the rest of your lives when you do rounds and you say and ask the nurse, What's the IV? And the nurse tells you it's at 125 cc's an hour. Your next question should be, what is the IV? What is the solution? Because I'm telling you from 38 years of practice, I have seen patients come up from the emergency room with the wrong IV solution. And guys, you have to be very, very particular. And what's the word? What's the word? Safe. Now, we are now concluding this lecture. It was a long and involved lecture, but it wasn't that terribly complex, was it? Everything made sense. I want you to review your notes that you took. I want you to structure it so it's easy to remember, easy to think about, and easy to access in your brain. And if you know, just on this one area we went through today, if you know all this, it is far more than you'll ever be tested on on the exam and far more than you'll ever need to know for life. So keep your notes organized. I want you to review it, make sure you can read your writing. And 
and be confident that you have the information necessary to successfully do this portion of the test and for life. And it was kind of fun, wasn't it? I mean, it was kind of good, all right? All right, I wanna thank you for your attention and I'll see you for the next lecture.